That's me. I did it. It works. I think maybe just oh. give you guys co-hosts, like put it back where it's supposed to go. <gasps> Yay. Thank you so much, Jamie, for like prompting that. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. It's all fantastic. Um, great. Okay. So yes, recording Jamie, she's on a br lunch break. Go. I will share this with all my classes. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and what is your, uh, and what is your focus so we can make sure we answer it? Um, uh, well, my major is counseling. Good. Um, I want to become a counselor, but Good. I still kind of have no idea what branch I want to be in, but I do want to start off with as a school counselor, you know, like for college, be a counselor and stuff cool. like that. Cool, cool, cool. Um, I'm actually taking two, uh, two different, I'm taking, I'm going to two different schools. I'm going with Santiago and I'm going to Santa Ana. Sure, sure. Most of my, yes, both of my classes are, well, all my classes are mostly at Santa Ana. So I just wanted to make sure like I'm taking the right classes. I'm going the right way. Cause I should, if I go the way my counselor was telling me, it, um, I should be graduating in the spring oh, wow. of next year. Cool. So that's why I wanted to make sure if I'm actually doing the right classes or because it's been a while since I've been to school and with this whole pandemic, a lot of things have, have changed. Yeah. Yeah. So that's I just really want to make sure. And I agree. And so um, I have a little bit of I, I went to school for MFT. And so I can tell you, in addition to what the counselor said, there are certain classes that that are in our core that can get you towards a permit like Jackie was asking earlier, but also transfer. Oh, awesome. So 107 transfers for sure. 110 transfers for sure. Both of those classes you're going to want to need. You're going to have to, I mean, like just, just in counseling people, just in, just in interacting with people to know developmental milestones, like we're doing in 107 and then cultural stuff, like in 110, our spheres mm -hmm. of influences. Um, and then 221 is a good one because that's teaching and learning in a di diverse community, which we are in. Mm -hmm. um, and then we also have intro to the special needs, which is 205. Because even if you learn what we're learning right now in 107, it's all the typical child, right? But we have this whole diversity of, you know, learning disabilities and whatnot. So yeah. there's a lot to know there. And all those, all of those transfer. Awesome. Yeah. So that's, that's super helpful. I think I, I, I look at it like, I mean, we're, I mean, I tell people I have the best job in the world. I get to help people you learn about people <laughs> like you know, <laughs> they're little people and then a lot of the stuff that applies to little people applies to each other even as adults because guess what we all are kind of like still kids on the inside sometimes yeah, yeah. it's like my mom says we don't stop no. learning till no. we pass away correct good smart woman very wise very wise <laughs> yeah and so even though we learn stuff let's say you're learning about you know attachment you know, in, mm -hmm. in chapter five or whatever in 107, uh, you're going to find, I could tell you as a therapist, even an intern therapist, attachment was like 95% of the problem. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yeah. And so it was like, oh, you, you, you know, drink five bottles of champagne every day. Yeah. That, that there's, there's an attachment piece there. <laughs> like, yeah. What are we trying to find in the champagne bottle that you can't, or is maybe missing? Right. And how do we do that better? Right. So it's really interesting. So all of our classes do lead you down a path. However, you end up there. Nobody's on plan A, by the way. Hey, Jody, are you on plan A? Is this where you thought you'd be when you grew up? <laughs> you're, you're muted. Do that now. Yeah. No, I was going to be an engineer. Yeah. I'm going to be a nuclear a power engineer. plant, people. <laughs> yeah. So, so like, I, I have a, you know, there are still days when I shake my head and go, huh? <laughs> I don't get it here, <laughs> <laughs> but eh, it is what it is. No, yeah, but it's fantastic. Be like, honestly, I have to tell you right now, um, you're probably a great engineer, but they don't deserve you. We'll take you. We'll, we do. <laughs> we deserve your your <laughs> lovely <laughs> skills. Nah, 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 nah. That is that engineering mind thinking of seeing big pictures and being able to go out and go in and and so I do bring some of that yes. those pieces of engineering with me in my thinking and how I problem solve but other than that well human uh, engineering human engineering is the same concept of well, like I always thought I'd be a human factors I like mechanical engineers because I'm very mechanical but then it got to be where I really like human factors engineering because I I'm always like looking at things about how do you reduce redundancy and like like something like grocery shopping where you pick it off the shelf, put it in a basket, take it out of a basket, put it in the thing, take it out of the 
the uh, conveyor belt, put it in your bag, put it in your bag, put it in the car, put it in the car, put it in the house, put it in the house, put it in the cover. Yeah. And then take it out again. I'm thinking, that is insane how many times I handle something just to make dinner. Correct. <laughs> <drive these bananas. laughs> Correct. Correct. And so looking at looking at taking those skills and putting those in in regards to humans, it's beautiful. It's yeah. a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. I don't think it goes the other way. I don't think that translates from like human <laughs> back. Like, no, I don't it, think so. it's, try to explain that to somebody, but you know, it, but it did give, it does give me skills. So like um, the, in other areas that like really help when it comes to planning and forecasting and thinking about some things. So I do, I, I do think it adds, but that's all I can tell. <laughs> but, so we are, I mean, we are so fortunate that you bring your expertise to us. I'm so, so excited. Do you, let's just jump into like the classes needed for the permit. Some of you might already know this information. Some of you might not already know the information. Um, I do, did, I had the catalog pulled up earlier, but uh, I could do that or we could just talk about it. What the cap eight courses? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, so it's, it's child growth and development. Mm -hmm. So that's 107. Then you need 111 A and B. You need a uh, child family community, which is 110. Mm -hmm. uh, observation and assessment, which is 108. Mm -hmm. And then the role of diversity in, which is 221. Yeah. So it's that one, two. You missed one. Three, four, five, six. You're gonna, I'm looking at the, oh. You're gonna laugh. That was five of the cap eight ones. I wasn't into the, uh, uh, hang on, let me go. Courses. You're gonna laugh. I was in one you I forgot. the Child Development Training Consortium um, website, but I have it. Um, Cap Classic. There's there's one te one class that you're teaching right now. That's all. Oh, health, safety, and nutrition. <laughs> it's one twelve health, safety, <laughs> yeah. and nutrition. And then I'm like, ah, oh, one ten two twenty. <laughs> So here's the down, here's the, here's the tricky There's part. There's one more I'm missing. <laughs> well, 298. Oh, no. oh, practicum. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So here's, one. here's a funky, here's a funky thing. Our, okay. So there's these numbers, right? And people go, oh, well, I have to take 107, then 108. Mm -mm. I wish it were that outline. I wish, you know, health, I think, I, I wish it was like, um, child family community was one 108 and then you know it could like the numbers would go in sequence they don't necessarily so no. <laughs> yeah so it's a little frustrating because you're like yeah oh i took 107 so now i should take 108 no 108 you need a couple more classes under your belt because it's pretty gnarly it's it's observation assessment and there's a lot of a lot of information there that you want to have your feet a little bit more wet so i always suggest 107 and 110 i don't always suggest them take them concurrently because that's a lot of information at this age. A lot. A lot. So I say take 107, uh, then take the other classes that you need for whatever your goal is. Like if you're going to get your AA or AAT, take, I tell people, always your four classes. Take one that's in your major or a prerequisite in your major. Take one that's kind of stinky that you don't really want to do, but you got to do it anyways. Take one that you love, that it's like a no-brainer you could do it in your sleep and then do one in the middle, right? So some sort of like... For me, it was like, you know, I don't like people. Most people say, oh, I hate math. I don't want to do it. Well, yeah, you can't put it off. So just get it in there and you know what? Just <laughs> right, do your best. Um, and then I was would take one in my major and then I would take like a kind of a funner class that was like the, the general ed class, like an art class or history, anthropology, something that was a little bit more easy, loose, you know, not super rigorous. And then, you know, again, the major, the hard class, the easy class, and then one that's like a prereq or something like that. So, uh, and then you come back the following semester and then take the 110. At that point, you could maybe double up on one other thing, maybe health and safety at that point. What do you think, Jody? You could take one. Yeah, I definitely think that you could take uh, one of the other child development courses. I, yeah, even I, 21. I I just, yeah, I'm with you. I would not take 107 and 110 together. There, there, there's so much information. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I almost think like even 111 and 111 A and B, which you are, are too much to take too with that 
Well, we we're, we're now what we're doing is the A and B classes. We're doing eight weeks and eight weeks, which is still really hard, but yeah, it's done. Hard. But then it's done. But before you take um, one uh, one eleven, you take one o eight. You take that as a pre right. So yeah. ultimately, you take one o seven. Following semester, you take one ten, and maybe health and safety with it. Or uh, I highly first, recommend health and safety. Yeah, or like even that. diversity. Even diversity would would back oh, up yeah. one ten uh, or that one. Those would work together. If you took health and safety and 108 together, that'd be all right. Because 108 yeah. is really intense. And then 112 can be, it can be kind of intense, but the information is not brand, brand new, right? Health, safety, nutrition. I think we all have like a basis of that knowledge versus observation and assessment. We're all kind of new to that. Um, and then you want to add in after the, after you've taken your, um, those like core classes, those are the ones you could get you into working in a, in a center. Take the first two classes, go to work. When you have those four, then you, you know, you might, you get a little, maybe a little bump up at your place or you want to move to another place that, that works. And then when you take your 108, then now you're looking at like, what's happening? How do I observe? How do I record? What are the forms? What are the, you know, what's the DRDP? Well, all those pieces of observation assessment that we know that this child is progressing in an expected or unexpected manner. Um, and then you do the, the 111 A and B, which is principles and practices and intro to curriculum. And then after that, it's just, you know, again, a lot of people forget health and safety or diversity. So they kind of throw one of those in and then you sign up for practicum. We did add Jody as a, as a side note, um, Regina wanted 297 as a prerequisite for practicum. So I think it could be concurrent as a requisite. So we'll have to talk about that more. 297 is? Reflective practice. Oh, we've, oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So can you guys, <sighs> let me see, let me do a new share right here. Um, I'm gonna show you what it looks like in the catalog. Um, catalog. Okay, so our, right here, it kind of starts in the middle right here. There we go, child development. And so we have um, two associates of arts one is for child and adolescent transfer, uh, for trans. One is child and adolescent development for transfer. Other ones, um, early childhood education for transfer. And the difference is, is that the child and adolescent development is typically a little, there's a little bit more to it, but it also, these are transferable to like the CSU. If you wanna be a child development major and then go into the teaching credential program, that kind of puts those things together. Um, and then we have this this transfer here, which is the AS. Uh, has a little, it has a like a little bit less class. It's usually opposite. Our AA has a little bit more, but our AS has a little bit less. It's usually opposite of that. But you can see here, 107. They put them in numerical order, but we don't always say to take them in numerical order. So again, they're the same here: 107, 108, 110, 111 A and B, 112, 221, and then that's it. So here you would get your this. These are the core classes for your transfer and you would have your permit. Look at that, 107, yep, that's all of them. So you could have your permit to be an early childhood teacher and have an AA in the same amount of time, which is pretty amazing. And keep in mind that any of those permits are not done through the college, but they are done through the California Department of Teacher Credentialing. So you actually have a early childhood teaching credential. Yeah. That is really important for when we, right now we're advocating for more pay for early childhood educators. And the only way, I mean, this is my personal opinion now, is if we have, if we say to uh, K-6 teachers, you have to have a credential or K-12 teachers, you have to have a credential and they're getting paid $25 plus or more an hour to have that teaching credential. And here we are in early childhood in the most formative years of a child's life. And we're paying people $11 an hour, $12 an hour. There is something seriously wrong with that. Okay. But we can't advocate successfully for higher pay when we don't show that we have the education to back it up. Right. And when we have a teaching credential, which is what I'm gonna be hounding a lot of you for, if that's what you wanna do, then we start to look 
professional and legitimate. Right. And if anything, the pandemic showed us, besides the fact that we're woefully unprepared for a pandemic, <laughs> we're also woefully our 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 patchwork system of child care and education doesn't work. Right. I think that was it's kind of a weird uh, side effect in a way, for lack of a better term, or word, out, uh, unexpected outcome of, right. of COVID is that up to that point, up to that point, it was, and was, if you've been in my class, you've heard me say this, right? The teachers are saying, what are they doing with their kids all weekend? And the parents are saying, what are the teachers doing with the kids all day? Like, it can't be this anymore. COVID made it be this. Teachers had to learn how to manage their own family and their own children during education times and parents had to learn how to manage how to like slightly become more of a teacher and so right. there's no there's no clearly defined like your job stops here and my job stops here. yeah there are some of those things when it comes to like you know legal and ethical issues but like in terms of education it's not just in a classroom and so like again like jody says these are formative years with these young people these little preschoolers these infant toddlers they are learning and we're not, it's almost the most important job of all. And we're not on parity with salary. So we're always gonna be advocating for that. So not just us speaking about it, there are some, there is some movement in this regard, which is super exciting. Um, two things, uh, one, this permit piece that, that we're talking about to be an early, I would say, get it, get it now. Because, now because it's going to be ch it's changing and those of you who have it now are going to be probably grandfathered, grandfathered in. in yeah and, and this so, has happened in yeah. every industry slp yes. had this otpt had this mft had this nursing even had this so before people were licensed or registered nurses or mfts or or ot's or pt's or slp's it was a permit like this. It was sort of like, did you take all these classes and you know jump through these hoops? Now it's going to be a credential, and if you have your permit, it automatically turns into this what we're call, I guess it's calling uh, teacher preparation expectations, and like an actual it's going to be probably an ECE credential. So yeah, get it, get it done now. You'll be get glad that now. you did. <laughs> Contact me. <laughs> yeah, Jody's fantastic and putting all the nuts and bolts together. She, she's a professional advisor on that. So um, it's needed for um, not just for teaching, but all like you said, you mentioned the uh, MFTs and whatnot. Like no, MFT had their same. They had a similar process. Oh, got so you. Got to you. be okay. a count. So people were counselors and still to this day, you can kind of get a certificate to be a counselor, um, which is almost a step up from like giving your friend advice, right? It's still kind of a paraprofessional term counselor. And, and, and in college counseling is different because that's academic advisement really. Right. Um, but a counselor, let's say you went to like, like, like if you were trying to see a therapist, like a counselor would be almost like maybe a bachelor's level at this point. And a therapist is usually master's level or higher. Before it was just kind of an open, did you take these classes? And yes, here's a certificate that says you took all these classes. Then they legitimately had to outline the courses, take a test, pass these things. So, so we here in ECE are in that piece where it's, it's still rigorous. And the fact that you have to take all these classes and prove that you took these classes and get your fingerprints and all that business but it's going to become more rigorous. And so what we're saying is like, get it now, because once it is required, a credential, an ECE credential is required. And we're talking probably the next five or 10 years, the ECE credential, um, it'll be harder to get after they outline the credential versus if you have the permit, it'll turn into a credential. Now, MFTs, you have to you get an MFT, you have to have a master's degree. So that's a marriage and family therapist. Yeah. Marriage and family therapist. Make sure we're got our it, Yes, yes, thank you. So MFT is marriage and family therapist. It's on the same par as a high school counselor. Like if you guys remember you saw your high school counselor, they have to have a master's degree as well. It's called people personnel P PPS degree. Um, they, they used to have those at Cal State Fullerton when I was there going through the program. Also an LCSW licensed clinical social work is the same thing, a master's level. All three of those people can do counseling and guidance, um, but technically the PPS is is for school counseling, and then 
MFTs therapy and LCSW can do therapy. So there's this thing where what I'm saying to you is that it's um that's a master's level. It used to not be a master's level. So ECE will pro might eventually, as we are bringing more bachelor's degrees into the community college. Yeah, because Santa Ana College has bachelor's degrees now. Maricosta has bachelor's degrees now, mm -hmm. right? And so as we're those that might be like our whole division, I mean, our whole department here might turn into a bachelor's level, which means means more money, more classes, more rigor. And we're not saying it's not rigorous now. We're just saying do it now before it gets extra, <laughs> like extra. Yeah, it's interesting when you're this old because I'm ancient and you like look back and go, oh, that's how that shit happened. I have a, several of my friends who we're going to SLP, we're kind of in the SLP speech language pathology before it was really rigorously certified. So it's really interesting to see how things have moved. I'm looking in chat. Um, um, Valerie, oh, hey, Valerie's here. Um, being an RBT, what's what's an RBT? Registered behavior tech? Is that what you're saying? Uh, behavior technician. Okay, yeah, so that's, that's gonna be a similar process too. Um, that in those terms, and the reason I was tripping over that is that those terms are kind of interchangeable depending on where you, where you are a behavior tech. Uh, I have been a behavior tech, and we call it a behavior interventionist. I have a I have a BI in my home, who comes weekly now. Um, so yeah, these things are <laughs> in the works. Yeah. So so child development always, no matter where you're going to end up, the core classes will get will get you there. So uh, let me give you a, a backwards example real quick. So I myself was not a child development person, but I took all the child development classes that happened to fit into my degree. My degree, I my bachelor's degree is in sociology. Bye, Jamie. We'll see you later. Um, my, my bachelor's degree is in sociology, but I took all these classes that looked like child development classes, which they were, but they also were sociology classes, right? So I could have gotten an undergrad in child development, child and adolescent studies that my friends did, um, sociology, psychology, or human services. All those classes, they worked for all four of those majors. And I mean, technically, and the work that I went into was more human services than anything. I went into MFT and then social work. And so it doesn't, like I'm saying, the classes that you take, it doesn't matter where you end up. These classes are all going to lead you there, right? So the 107 for sure, 110 for sure, 221 for sure, even 112 for sure. Right, because um, I'm still dual, duly enrolled and I go to Canyon High School. Yeah. And by the time I graduate, I'll get my certificate. I know that's so exciting. I didn't know I could have done that in high school too. I would have totally done that. How you have yeah. like your certificate and a high school diploma at the same time, which is brilliant, Valerie. Yeah. Yeah, which is so great. And so that's fantastic. So, you're going to be a leader in your, in your world. Yeah, because you're like forging a path. Super awesome. Okay, cool. Does that answer your guys' question about which classes to take? Yes, thank you. Yes, thanks. Good. All right. So again, as you as you look at these classes here, they're not necessarily in order. So always just double check with us which ones. Again, the, the one that to me is the most out of order is the 108. That one, I mean, I wouldn't take that as the second class, not at all. I would take it as like the fourth class. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm taking that in the fall. So would that be good? So Valerie, you, you right now you're doing 107, right? Yeah, and then in the summer I'll do 110. Good. Okay. Yeah, yeah, and then 108. Yeah, 108 will be intense. Yeah, but it because it's a lot of um, really specific language around what you're observing, which is good, which is good. And the person who teaches that also teaches at Vanguard. And she's also works at Irvine Unified. So she can give you a lot of really good insight, tips and tricks on what 108 really requires out of you. Yeah, so exciting. And then around that time, Jody, is that's when we try to get them in on the permit, right? On that 108 is like, let's get your, let's get your permit going. 108, well, actually 111A, mm -hmm. they get them kind of, they talk about it in 108. A, but they really in 111A, they're supposed to go get it. And in 111B, they definitely should yeah. be getting it. And one of the problems we have is we 
tell you to go get it as part of your assignment, but then it takes maybe three months to get yeah. it back. So we don't ever know if you went and got it. Yeah. And so we need a tracking system to make sure our students are, are, are actually going out and getting their permits. And that's part of the reason why we're doing these meetings right. so that we can connect with you guys a little bit better instead of like guessing who did it, who hasn't done it. And we don't, we want you guys to be prepared ahead of time instead of like be prepared late because if, you know, if you have to, you know, run this thing through the state level office, it takes a while. And even fingerprinting and all that business, it takes a while, right? So there's a little side project here that we also do, and um, Jody can talk more about it, is about how to get some money back. Can you talk a little bit about that? Oh, yes. So, so unfortunately, well, fortunately, um, right now, they're only... The only way you can apply for the Child Development Training Consortium funds, which is $46 a unit, and the criteria, so that's nothing to sneeze at. That's $138 you know, or something like that per, uh, per under, yeah, 100, something like that. It's like $140-ish, whatever. So that's nothing to sneeze at for completing your course. Um, right now, they're only covering, you have to be on your, in your student record, it has to say, I am a child development or an early childhood major. That's the only way you can qualify. And you, if you don't know, you can change your major as often as you change your shoes. <laughs> Doesn't matter. I think I did four, four times before. Yeah. yeah. And so, so don't freak out if you put it early childhood. And then right now you're only, they're only paying for courses that are, are early childhood or child development courses offered by the child development department. Um, uh, which is unfortunate because they used to pay for your GE courses as well, recognizing that if you want to be a teacher, you have to have 24 units of GE courses in addition to your early childhood courses. And so that's a problem yeah. when you're not getting paid for that. But with COVID and the budget, that's all, we, that's all they would pay for the spring right now. Right. So who, who can use some extra money? Everybody. Right. And right. Jody is so committed to you guys. It's not even funny. I've honestly, if I've never met any advisor, uh, let's say I went to three different undergrad school, three, one, two, three, four, sorry, different schools for undergrad, never met one advisor who was like on fire to like help students. Well, I'm going to tell you that in the 19, uh, <clears throat> 70s, <laughs> Uh, I was taking child development, 70s and 80s, I was taking child development courses and I was using this money to, so it's been, that this program has been around a long time and that's how I got through, you know, was able to pay for some of my courses. I was able to pay, um, and we just do it as a flat stipend. We don't say it's for books. And a lot of you, if you're coming right out of high school, you're, you've got that tuition waiver. So we can't say it's for tuitions. And, you know, if we're using the OER books, the online free, essentially free resources, you're not paying for textbooks. And so we just call it a stipend and we give it to you and you can do whatever you want with it. Um, uh, but it pays you for completing the courses. Uh, you sign up at the beginning of the semester and then you get your you get paid after your grades are submitted. I have to run your grades through, and then um, and then the the reimbursement comes after that. So it's about six to eight weeks after the semester. Um, it's about it's around twenty four twenty five dollars a unit. Forty six dollars a unit right now. I had students who were taking twelve units that got five hundred and fifty some dollars. I mean, if, if you're taking, but that was because they were paying for GE courses. But even if you're taking three child development courses and you're a child development major, that's still a lot of money. It adds up really quick. Um, you do have to get a senior veteran, the course. Uh, and, um, and, here's and, a, and here's another thing. If you are already on a, a waiver, this still counts. It's, yes, it still counts. 
people go, oh, I can't do it because I'm already on whatever waiver and I already get this. Blah, blah, blah. No, 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 still counts. Yeah, still counts. You get a stipend. Yeah. It's a stipend. The stipend is do what you want with it. Yeah, it's a check. And it, honestly, you could you could say, I need gas to come to school. There, that covered my gas. I needed food so I could have brain power to study. I need that. You were good. We're good. We don't ask you for anything. We don't ask you. We don't oh. ask. It's it's really a stipend, but you have to be a child development major. And as of right now, you're only getting paid for the courses that are early childhood. Now, here's the kicker. Um, the college only gets 75 units worth of money. Yeah, there's a limit. So file your application. When you register for classes, the next thing you do is you, you know, you have to wait till the class starts, assuming that you're going to stay in it. And then you, um, you can file your application and you just put it in there and it says what courses I'm taking, they get approved and then you're in the system. And um, typically what I do is I take anybody who applies and then, um, so for I, so instead of 75 units, I submitted 83 units. But what happened was at the end of the year, some students who had dropped out, I was able to take their, their $46 a unit and spread that among everybody else yep. who I had turned in. Had I not turned in those extra units, those students would have been left out in the cold. But because um, I turn in extra units, I now get to pay those students that I might not have been able to pay mm -hmm. had everybody finished their courses. So the bottom line is it costs everybody else $2.30 to pay for the extra seven students. And I was like, that was worth it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah was we're trying it. to support you guys. I mean, because we know money is money and you know, yeah. nobody's got, nobody's rolling in it. Nobody's got extra, right? And so, okay, good. So I think we're down to Valerie and Alyssa. I wanna make sure that we're covering the bases that you need. Cause um, so I know I just have on our little agenda here, like the CDCC, uh, we kind of briefly talked about commencement. I don't think either one of you are graduating. Um, not quite yet, but you know, we'd love to have you participate. Uh, one more message here. Um, okay. Okay, so Valerie's asking, so once I've already graduated high school, received my diploma and child development certificate, um, uh, once I've finished those classes and received my credits, what's next in order to be an RBT? Now, RBT is, is a program that kind of connects our non-credit side, so I, I can't really talk too much about that, but what I would suggest is that you talk to Amanda. I'm going to give you Amanda's information here. Uh, Amanda... Um, she is like, she's like Caroline, but Caroline's a job developer. Amanda's like our counselor just for our like division. So I'm going to give you her in, information so you can contact her. I want to make sure that I get the right, right information. Okay, good. Hold on. Okay. Okay, good. Amanda Campbell. Let me see if I can get her. Just trying to pull it up. There we go. There we go. Let me do here. So what I would do is because she probably has actually more information than I do, I would go in there and, and, and email her. She's only part-time, so she'll tell you when she's available. She can do Zoom, she can do chat, she can do phone, whatever. And then um, she's awesome. So yeah, touch base with her. Yeah, touch just with her. Okay. Because RBT is, is new, and so I don't have all the information. Make sense? Good, good, good. Um, we wanted to definitely share, let me go back to, you can see the agenda still? Are we on that page still? Because I'm seeing everything. Um, we want to talk, I mean, because we've already talked about which classes to take. In the summer, we, we teach very few classes, but you guys are welcome to jump in there. Um, but we wanted to talk about what's upcoming. So I, I wanted, I'm going to put it right here, upcoming um, our 220 class in the fall. I really am going to want to get as many people in this class as, as possible to like, so what do we call, wait, this one is resilience, right? So yep. Jody, what do we want to say about this besides everybody? Well, okay. Well, what I want to say is uh, I went and got a second master's specifically for the purposes 
of addressing um, what I saw in early childhood classrooms in the students that I was teaching that same night. I was coaching preschool teachers and working in the classroom and seeing students who were clearly experiencing adversity during their lifetime. And it was those things were coming out as behavior problems in the classroom. <laughs> then I'd come to school at night and teach classes at Santiago. And I'd see students that clearly had experienced adversity in their life and saw how it could have been affecting their, their uh, ability just to um, their learning and and just their self-esteem and their feelings about themselves as individuals. Right, right. And I was like, there is really a connection here. And um, so what I ended up going to school and getting a master's in trauma and resilience in education, pre-K through 12, the principles apply to birth through um, you know, college. And so what we did, what I what we did was he took the 220 course, which is uh, child is victim, terrible name for a course. And we're re we rewrote that course. And Marianne and I have been teaching it together this semester. And it has just been. It, it's been so such um, a neat class. well, well, like a, a welcome, like an I like an island in the storm in a way. I don't know how to say it. It's like this, it's like, I look so forward to that class and the, and the conversations and the support that we all yeah. share in the class. I just, it's been fantastic. I've learned so much from the students and the fortitude and the stories and the, um, and the sharing is just incredible. It's really such a deep qualitative experience. It's, it's hard to even describe. Yeah, it is. I, I think. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. Yeah, I'm going to actually, well, the last journal assignment is to describe how you, how would you write a course description for this class? <laughs> because I'm really curious, because it is about learning about how early adversity has the potential to affect, um, to affect people. Yep. Why some people might be affected and some people might, might not be affected. When I'm talking oh. about early adversity, I'm talking about what you may have heard of ACEs, adverse childhood experiences, which include things like growing up in an abusive home, having experienced sexual, emotional, physical uh, abuse, neglect, um, feeling as of being unloved or cared for, witnessing domestic violence in your home, having a parent or somebody in the family who's been incarcerated, mm -hmm. uh, divorce, uh, moving. mental health, yep. mental, having mental health, be, having your parents been divorced and divorce in and of itself is not a bad thing, but when it, it is related to a separation from the family, it's, a, you know, one of your primary caregivers, one of your parents, Think about like these children at the border who are separated from their families and don't get to see their their mom or their dad. It's kind of the same parallel. The the things that it it causes in your body um, to happen, you become in this stress response state, which you're where you're kind of constantly in this fight, flight, or freeze mode. You're hyper vigilant most of the time, looking like, okay, what's going to happen next? What, what's next, what's next, what's next, you know? And so when you're constantly trying to protect yourself, the parts of your brain that need to be active for learning, even vocabulary, even hearing, receptive learning and expressive language, there's the brain shuts those down. Mm -hmm. And so you're operating in the, mostly in the function of survival mode. How do we get out of that? Yeah, yeah. And so, so many, and with COVID, there's a lot of talk about COVID being the equivalent of an ACE. And the ACE was these 10 factors that they looked at in a study back that was done 20 years ago. And they said, oh, if you, if you experience these things, we found out that there is a potential for you if you have four more of these ACEs, like, such as like, 
witnessing violence, you know, divorce, whatever, for these 10 factors that they came up with through research that were common themes, but that we know now that there's a lot of other things that could have been an adverse experience to somebody. Um, immigration status, racial, racial type discrimination, living in poverty, that's not on there, but yet does have profound effects on our ability to learn and our feelings about ourselves, and um, and just being, if you're food insecure, who, who, who do you, I'm sure we all know somebody who was food and, and or housing insecure over the last year. Yeah. yeah. And, and a lot of them are our students. Mm -hmm. And then we're telling you, come in the class, your, your assignments do uh, next Tuesday. You have to think, you have to do this. And you're just worried about where your next meal is going to come from, where I'm going to live. Your brain is not there. Not. So how do we then recover from this? And we talk about this healing journey, which has to do with building up resilience. And um, and um, and a lot of it's just a one caring person can make a difference. And um, and we and we talk a lot about that in having that drawing on those strengths that we have, that we have this adversity that happened to us, but we also have some things in us that make us resilient and make us able to rise above. We all know these people who like, man, they've just been knocked down and knocked down and knocked down and yet they bounce right back up and they're I'm so determined they're gonna you know, get through it all. And so when we think about that from that context, um, that's what we talk about. And so we talk about as educators, we talk about it on a personal level, um, uh, disclosure is not necessary. Uh, I don't even know what your aces are. I don't want to know what your aces are necessarily, but um, I don't need to know them because everybody has experienced adversity in their life. There's a common human element. It's happened. We have. So Absolutely. it's, so it's and, like. And, and a lot of times we, we even notice that in our class, so just that one statement that we've all experienced adversity, but even coming to the class, everybody comes to this concept differently. Whereas like, uh, probably a good half of the class is like, oh no, I'm good. Like I, I haven't really experienced trauma and, and adversity. And then you just give it a couple of weeks. <laughs> give it two then, weeks, yeah. And then people are go, I didn't even know this was. I was. I didn't even know. So if you're, especially if the students are coming from high school or have always lived in that environment, and then all of a sudden go, why well, did? I yeah. didn't know it was abnormal for my parents to be yelling and screaming at each other all the time, that that actually was an adverse, that was, I was living among domestic violence, because that's all I've experienced all my life, that's all I know, yeah. when in fact, that is considered an adverse childhood experience, yeah. Yeah. and and so, so we had students go that, and like, oh, yeah, I, I, and then it was like, oh my gosh, I didn't realize that my mom yelling at me and telling me I was no good, it was never going to amount to anything and was, was actually like a, abuse. <laughs> it was, it's, a, it's, a, it's a funky thing or, yeah, or, my, my dad would drink to pass out and I'd have to go pick him up at the bar. What's the big deal? You're like, yeah, you're 16. You shouldn't be having to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And there's, yeah. And, and, and there's a lot of research out there about what happens when uh, teens and tweens are are put into roles to be parents when they're not prepared to be parents. Uh -uh. And what that does, you know, what that has the potential to do. I don't like to say it does. It has, yeah. there, there are some associations in research and there are some things that are attitudes or dispositions that we may have adopted and not realized that they're healthy. So we talk about that. We talk about resilience. We talk about stress. We work on stress management uh, techniques that we adopt on ourselves, and then we and we also talk about the child. And here we are as teachers, and we have all these children. How do we create a classroom environment that is conducive to helping these children who are experiencing this home? We put them back together during the classroom every day, and we send them back home to these abusive relationships, the stuff that's going on in their house, and then they come back to us the next day and you know, and we, we repeat this cycle. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, uh, one of the articles that you shared with me, I think it said, 
a student who experiences domestic violence can have a six to eight hour period where their brain is still in literally in shock. So right. let's say the night before, and then they went to bed and they couldn't sleep. Now they're tired. They're still experiencing maybe some shock if that happened, you know, in the middle of the night or it happened before school. And now basically they recover at the end of the school day and the whole day you're like, what is up with the student? Why are they acting like this? Why are they lashing out? Why are they disassociating? Why are they extra quiet? So there's a piece where as early child educators, we can see these things and where that's the point of the class. So we're trying to get people to see more of these things so we can um, provide some support, some intervention and really mitigate the effect. So when we are in our twenties, <laughs> we're not so reactionary or living as a product of this versus being aware and being uh, mindful of self-care, our boundaries, our limits, and things like that. So it's it's a fantastic class. So excited. That we yeah, have it's it. been, I'm, I'm going to actually be sad. There's only been a couple of people who've shown up on our optional um, meeting nights on Wednesdays, but we have sure had some really great conversations and in the fall I'll be teaching it again and it will be hybrid um so we will um have, there will be required online attendance good and um because I think that it's really important to have that piece so it will be um but it'll be online and hybrid I just don't know what day yet um and and the other uh, there was what? something I was going to say about the class. Oh, so the reason why this is so important is uh, there's a tremendous cost to trauma to the tune of $123 billion, billion dollars a year, just in the state of California, the national level, when you're talking about increased costs for mental health care, for suicide prevention, for um, uh, physical health care, for lost time at work, for not for repeating classes in school because you, you take the classes, you, you're trying to get out, you're trying and you, you know, you, you, you fall backwards. Um, and so there's this enormous cost of this. And what they're finding is if you have lived for most of your life in when you experience stress, your body releases these stress hormones. Our bodies are like cortisol and adrenaline. They prepare your body to fight, flight, or freeze. And um, mostly to fight or flight. So the, your muscles, the blood flow goes to your muscles, doesn't go to your brain because we're gonna fight our way out of something or we're gonna freeze. And so these, so our body's doing all these things. And what happens is our bodies were not meant to be soaked in fear or a stress response system activated um, 24 seven. And when that happens later in life, it shows up in your body. There's a great book called Your Body Keeps Score and it shows up in uh, higher rates of heart attacks, uh, arthritis, asthma, uh, heart disease, strokes, uh, losing 20 years of your life. I mean, it's that bad. It's, it's a huge. And so the idea is to really be healthy. Marianne and I have been we're really blessed with an opportunity to write something and which I really hope is going to take off and become a college-wide movement, but to become a trauma-informed college. And we are working on planting the seeds of that over the next five years. And hopefully the college will move to that as a whole. And um, we have a lot of services out there for students. We have the pantry, we have the mental health, we have this, we have that, but they're not housed within the understanding that this is all part of a trauma response uh, to our, you know, trauma informed response to our students. And so that's just kind of like above and beyond all of this course, but there is a master plan in my head. <laughs> so it's right. Really because I mean, ultimately, it's not just about um, future teachers. It's all of us. And like, even like she said, we have all these programs. I mean, we, we have so much support for veterans and even formerly incarcerated and, you know, Omoja, everything. Yeah. We have so much support, but 
the, the interesting thing that all these groups share is a level of trauma and resilience. So why not make that the, the norm across the campus instead of this group and that group and this group and that group? Isn't isn't that make more sense? It's not like we're erasing those groups. We're, we're providing almost a continuity for all those groups to, you know, say, hey, we are a more alike than different. And so let's, let's look at that as an institution instead of just a bunch of little services inside of an institution. So super excited to be on this journey with her. And I can't wait for as many students as possible to take that class. Yeah. Again, we are so fortunate that our classes have so much of a life skill piece to it. Mm -hmm. You know, even 107, you learn stuff in there that you're just like, oh my gosh, I can't believe like that's totally, I went through this or I happened to this or I'm seeing this in my little sister or my child or whatever. And it's the same thing with trauma and resilience. It's, it hasn't escaped anyone. This is the first time in our essentially recorded history that the entire planet is sharing the same traumatic event. That's, it's unbelievable because now we have a basis for connection and not separation. Yeah. So why not put it as part of our school? Our, listen, our mission statement includes our civic responsibility. Like we're not just here to like, like puppy mill a bunch of just people who have their nose in a book. We're here to create learners, to create um, well-rounded adults that can help then shape eat every little bubble in their own community. So then essentially the world becomes a better place. Yeah, is it one class at a time? Certainly is, it could be one person at a time. Yeah, it's so, so really- I could I, I'm going to get off that soapbox now because I could talk for hours on it. So could Marianne, because we've been co-teaching the class together, and it's it's really it's it's really been uh, uh, just an amazing amazing class. Uh, I can't I can't say enough about it. How uh, how wonderful it's been, and I think really helpful to the students. Um, we do go over um, the stuff we have to do. You will become mandated reporters. You will have your mandated reporter certificate uh, qualification for when you leave this class. Correct. Um, so that is one thing because when you go to work, the first thing they're going to do is sit you tell you you need to complete this mandated reporter training, and here you go. It's eight hours of training on your time, and so yeah, absolutely. I wanted to kind of piggyback on what you were saying about the um, the trauma class and how we want to bring this to the, the the campus. Look, in the fall, you guys will see most likely a survey that yes. goes out. And I know a lot of times um, we ignore things like that, um, but we really are hoping that we get a decent response rate on that. We're going to ask people about, you know, what is their, you know, level of, you know, stress and coping and things like that. I mean, we've been, sometimes when the campus sends out a survey, it's more about nuts and bolts. Like, are you still in the class? Are you dropping the class? Are you like, what, you know, it's some of those things. We're going to start getting past the, um, the black and white institutional questions into like, who are you as a learner and how can we as an institution support that? Uh, and so if you guys see a, a survey that comes out, please, 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 please respond to that. Um, we'll probably hound you when it gets closer or right when it rolls out. We'll probably like, <laughs> we'll probably be right again. <laughs> yeah, we'll, I just want to give everybody a heads up, you know, <laughs> and like, here's the thing here. The funny thing is, is that um, in order for us to bring this to the, to the institution, they asked us a survey and Jody and I answered. A lot of people didn't answer. We answered and gave them our two cents. And then they said, you know what? You're right. We need to start looking at the qualitative aspect the quality of our students life not just like are you taking a class or are you dropping it has not it has way more to do with that the taking the class and the dropping is also very much connected to trauma and resilience so we're trying to bring a, a larger scope of uh, inclusion and sensitivity to everyone to as an institution not just as a professor because i mean jody has really taught me a lot about having uh, being as I consider myself an inclusive educator. However, there's like, oh, I didn't really consider that. She's really opened my eyes and the level of care and support that comes from her. And then I see how it trickles out that 
that should be the standard and not the exception. And so we're trying to, you know, bring, bring a level of better, bring a level of better, bring something better, you know, and, and I know we all expected 2021 to be better, but it's been, <laughs> it's been its own set of challenges. So we're hoping that the fall gives us a new, fresh look and perspective and whatnot. So as we start transitioning back and things like that. So really excited about that. So you'll see a survey going out. And speaking of surveys, I was considering putting out a survey to our students. And so I just wanted to kind of touch base on them and like, what are, what are some of your needs? Um, or even down here where I put department goals, we are trying to look at how we can create a well-rounded or well-informed teacher as you guys go out. I mean, because education out there has changed. So it's changed so much here. It's changed like education as an industry has changed so much. There's gonna be a whole nother set of skills that are required. And we, as an, as educators, we have to well, we have to well prepare you. Hi, oh, it's Professor Duesenberry. Hi, she's like intensely staring at, hi, Janet. I, I don't think she can hear us quite yet. Hi there. Oh yeah, no, there's her graduating. She was a Santa Ana college student. So that's really excited to see that. that was <laughs> so sweet, so sweet. That looks like her hood though. So I think that was a Pacific Oaks, but that's awesome. Yay, Professor Dusenberry, can you hear us? Connecting to other. Hey. Hi, yay. Unmute yourself. Yeah, mm -hmm. unmute yourself. Say hi. We only have two students on here, but we're recording. So you can say hi to everybody who's gonna watch it later. Hi everyone. Hi. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself and what classes that you teach so the students can be looking ahead, looking forward. Sure. Well, my name is Janet Anderson Dusenberry, and I um, live in beautiful Orange, and I like sunset. No, I'm just kidding. That's right. Long walks on the beach. Yeah, yeah, long walks on the beach in between classes. But the classes that I teach at SCC are, I'm, I can give you the numbers, which is I've taught 107, 108, um, two, 15, 216, 217, and 250. Right. So that so, is the intro to child development. Yep. 108 is observation and assessment. 215 yep. is admin one, administration one. 216, mm -hmm. admin two. Yep. 50 is another admin course, right? It is. It's adult supervision. Adult supervision. And then what was the last one? The last one is, um, well, 217, which is the art, which I'm so excited. Oh. It is brand new and I'm so excited to teach it over at SCC because I'm um, teaching it at SAC right now. And it is, oh, it is, we're having so much fun. So I'm, I'm very so excited. Glad it. I'm so glad it's music. It. Excuse me. Did I say yeah. art? It's music. Yeah. I'm so sorry. I have the art class and I have one student signed up for the summer. So I'm like, <laughs> we'll see if I can get 19 more. Mm. Well, that's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's, it's a really both the art and you know both the art and the music classes are so important when you're working with the young when the young child so they really need to we need to fill those up and, and they're a lot of fun we're having so much fun right now so i'm excited and you you kind of look like a movie star who's like showing us your beautiful house <laughs> oh am i i'm kind of walking around it was just clean today so it's actually clean <laughs> which is awesome because um, what they see behind you is different than what they see behind me. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, well, this is my, this is my office. This is the only office I have. So yeah, that's a beautiful thing. But I'm so glad that you could jump in and say hi, because we're trying to put these meetings together so people can have a little bit more connection. And I know it's May, it's the end of the school year, but at the same time, we kind of want to get a, an idea of what, like what the students could use in like next, the next meetings. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, so um, so I did put on, I just put like a little, a little um, agenda or whatever, but I'm, I'm thinking we're going to probably keep it to Friday afternoons, you know, and if people can make it, if they can't, or we could, I was thinking first Fridays, I don't know. I, I don't, I don't know if there's a better time than other times for people. I know like two to four is a rough time, you know, if people are working full time, um, but we're, we're well, considering doing skills building and movie, mm -hmm. like movie screenings and things like that during these times Almost great. Like and I love that I, I love that you're recording it because what we can do is um you know 
professors here at the school is we can actually um, implant it, embed it in our, our, our um, courses so they can see other courses and also, again, meet us and we can pull more people into this wonderful Absolutely. field that we belong to. Absolutely. What you just missed was like Jody's soapbox about trauma and resistance. <laughs> You missed my soapbox. <laughs> oh man, I'm sorry. I was trying to get home so fast. I was oh, trying no, to I'm teasing you. <laughs> well, we all have our soapbox. Which one's yours? That's right. Yeah, which one's your soapbox? My soapbox is um, developing appropriate practices within early childhood settings like preschools and, and so forth because um, I visit a lot, especially in the private sector and yeah, not in practice. No, it's just not there. And you know, we're I'm out of 56 schools in the Diocese of Orange. I'm the only one that's QRS rated. Oh wow, I did not know that. I mean, the only, yeah, I'm the only one, and it's and it, it's just so that's can you, my thing. Can you for the for the benefit of the audience talk about just what QRS is real quick? Sure, QRS is a quality rating system that the state of California. Um, works very closely with Department of Ed to um, give ratings, star ratings. So a five is perfect and a four is really good as well. So you want to get a four or five, actually. And what that is, is schools that are federally funded, like Head Starts, or schools that are state funded through state, through the mon through money of the state, um, they have to be a four or five or they don't get the funding. Well, I am in a private sector, so it doesn't matter. I have, my is all tuition based, so I get the money off either way, but who holds you accountable? Licensing only does so much. Licensing is the bare minimum of what a preschool or a schools should look like. Mm -hmm. So this QRS raises the bar. They talk about class, which, and they talk about Eckers. Eckers is the environment. What do we have in the environment that's going to promote critical thinking? What do we have in the environment that's going to, you know, with teacher child interactions are going on. And then we talk about class which is how we speak to another. How many feedback loops are we having? How are we provoking conversation? So this QRS looks at several things and you have to have, you have to be high, you know, high, high quality program okay. to get this four or five stars. So, yeah. and yeah. we got five stars twice. Every two years you're rated. And I'm sure the kiddos don't quite get it all, but the parents are pearly happy. Right. And when I have these big posters, ask how we're a quality program. So it's, it's really nice. It's, it's nice. And when you're looking, when you're looking at getting a job, make sure it's a QRS rated or it's a lab school. It's a highly rated program. So not only are the children, you know, treated correct, you are too as an employee. Correct. Right. Absolutely. Right. So yes. These are the quality instructors that we have here. So we want to make sure that that fire is under all the students to make mm -hmm. sure that that, you know, we are not sending students out to go to a, a program that's not that great or a program that's not going to treat them well. Again, you wanna, if you're going to give your all in the in the growth and development of young people, you want that same sort of support too. So absolutely. Right. These are some of the skills that we wanted to build in the department. Um, right. and Caroline was on here too. She's the job developer and she does help with interview skills. So we could probably have her talking about really basic interview skills here too. And um, as a department, we wanted to, again, we want to create a well-rounded future teacher, you know, as we're sending you mm -hmm. out there that you're not just, you know, we've identified probably in one of your classes that maybe you're an introvert. Well, that's okay. You could still be an introvert, but how do we, how do we still communicate effectively with coworkers, peers, children, and parents? Right. right. And how do we how do we look for a program's philosophy? Is that philosophy a match mine? Because if it doesn't, I don't care how much they pay me, you are going to headbutt no, daily. Correct. Correct. And we do. And we also don't want students bouncing around every two to three weeks. We want right. you to look. It doesn't at look good on your resume either. You're, you're, you know, you know. And, you know, and not every fit's a great fit. But if you can't stick it out for six months, then your uh, your resume is going to not look so great. So, you know, maybe, right. you know, it, ideally you want to stay there longer. But again, professional development means that onward and upward, right? So even when a student gets in as, a, as an assistant or associate teacher, we still are trying to like get you into higher levels of an actual teacher. And then after site supervisor, mentor teacher, and then director. I mean, there's a, there's a lot to do in this industry. It doesn't have to stay at minimum wage or right. less sometimes. Um, so right. there's a, yeah, there's a piece there. So we're trying to look at the classes and look at what creates that well-rounded educator. Right. Because a teacher is not just like a punch in, punch out job. 
It's not. Right. It's not. Nope. You, that is your career. It's it's who you are versus something that you just step into and punch a clock. If you want to punch right. a clock, go work somewhere else. This right. is a lifestyle. This is a this yeah. is a philosophy. This is right. Right. And and obviously we're kind of preaching to our own choir right here. Right. <laughs> and if you want to make a difference in the world, you know, I always tell my husband, he'll we'll talk about jobs. And I'm like, I am changing the world one child at a time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Whether they like it or not. No kidding. <laughs> right. That's Was right. that a kind way to speak to our friends? No. And our, right. is that what we do with our hands? <laughs> Right. Right. So I'm really excited. So Janet, now that we have you and I know Valerie's listening and Alyssa's, Alyssa's listening, what what would you like to see with these like monthly major meetings? What, what do you think we could use these for? What do you think would be a best use of this time? Well, it, it, I think definitely um, maybe we can spotlight a student. Oh, great. Um, in the class, great you know, maybe spotlight a student monthly um, and that student can come on and, and tell us maybe where they've been and where they're going and, and how these classes has made a difference, you know, in, in their life, maybe, mm-hmm. um, and maybe share a story about, you know, the children that they've touched as well. Um, <laughs> and then, idea. and then, then really just having, um, the students having a, even more time than us talking because we want to hear what do you need? What are your needs? Have, uh-huh. have you applied for a permit? Do you know about permits? You know, there's money for these permits. You can right. get your permit free. You can upgrade for free. You know, just giving them giving them some time to right. see what, what, what they'd like to see or what oh, and, they need. And, um, and at the beginning, when you introduce yourself, you forgot about your uh, professional association roles. Not, yes, only, so- not only is she a director and a professor, I, I am a full-time teacher, so I, I'm te- I teach and direct at my school, but yeah, no, I sit on a couple different boards. I'm a planning council um, member as well as um, a board member for OKIC, which is a uh, wonderful organization, right? A wonderful organization in Orange County that puts on trainings and you name it. They're, they're really wonderful to be affiliated with. And it looks great on your resume. Womp, womp. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Again, with the well-rounded educator. Love it. Love it. Thank you so much. Thank you. So much. You're welcome. Yeah. And so if You're there's welcome. any suggestions that you have for this time, and I do like formatting a student, I like, um, like uplifting a student. I think that's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Let it us is. know. And we'll, we, maybe we'll do a little bit more, like, I don't know, some sort of process on that or have like, a, I don't know, how do we, I, I know that we're coming back to campus a little bit, but I don't want to only have like a suggestion box. There's got to be some sort of electronic suggestion box, something like that. Right. That we can, that we can uh, keep going on this. Like, yeah. So um, Jody has like these great movies that we can, um, we can view. Um, we have, we can even bring in guest speakers. We can do whatever mm-hmm. we need. Yeah. I think it's fantastic. But like the first 30 minutes could be like, yeah, hi, this is a student who's got a fantastic story and, and, and some successes and can always lead and grow. Absolutely. Yeah. And how did you get there? What did you have to do? What are the steps? Yeah. Because we want to model after you, which, you know, right. how did you get there? Yeah. Sounds like good. I'd love to put Alyssa on the spot, but maybe next year. Okay. Uh, next, <laughs> only because, next year or next time. Only because I know Alyssa's already amassed a lot of education under her belt, but she's also looking at what's a good fit for her as she's going forward, which is a beautiful thing. That's a great thing. I mean, as we grow, we start to go like, is that, does this path connect to me or do I need to like change lanes a little bit? And I think that's gorgeous. It's part of the, um, you know, your own developmental process and your own professional development. And I'm always, I'm a big fan of it. I took so many lane changes to get here. I can't, I can't even, I can't even describe it. So many lane changes to get here, but, but you land where you land. Uh, hopefully people do it earlier than when I landed, but um, it just takes to keep moving forward and, and trying on different roles and keeping up with your education and, you know, all these little certificates that are out there, we're a big fan of. So we're hoping to just keep augmenting our students, almost like we try to get the club going in like 2019 and then like the, the Pando help hit. And so we're like, but we still want to support students without having a club, you know? So we want, that's what we're looking at this for. Excellent. Okay. So it's about three 30. If there are no more questions, we can wrap it up a little bit early. I mean, I don't want to. What about? I'm sorry, I popped. I'm sorry, I popped off because I'm. I was changing real quick. Um, what about also including maybe highlighting a certificate each time? Oh, like, hey, how about this certificate, guys? You only need to take this class, this class, and this class, and maybe just even in ten minutes talking about the certificates that are available because we're constantly coming up with new ones. Yeah, and it's absolutely. They're they're great. 
Great to I have. just wrote one today, actually. <laughs> Did you see? Yeah. yeah, for language and literacy. Oh, perfect. Yeah, perfect. Is, yeah, but we had the catalog up earlier talking about which classes to take in sequence, but you're right. We could say, hey, here's the admin certificate. Because sometimes, yeah, and that's a, a, such a good one to have. Oh, I love it. And that you need that to be able to get your site soup or yep. um, program yep. director. Yep, absolutely. So we want to make sure that we're supporting people as we're supporting people. Right. And you want to get the highest certificate you can because they're going to be changing everything pretty soon. Right? I know we talked about that too. We're like, oh, get it now. <laughs> and they're going to want more education, I think. Yep. Get it now because I, I went through the same process as it, for MFT. It was like, I came to mm. add it too late and I had to do a master's degree when mm. like, you know, 15 years prior, 10 years yeah. prior, it wasn't required. <laughs> I was like, that's actually two years of school, man. Well, that's why I think students need, they need to know what's out there, what we need, what you guys need to do now and make sure you, you steady. And the biggest thing that, you know, the biggest thing that I learned uh, the hard way was I was taking all these classes for so long and then I had to take a break and then all this math was added to that same degree. So I had to take all these math classes. So you, we need to know, make sure you take a class every semester just to stay active because yep. the, yep. the minimum requirements change too. So. Yeah. Oh yeah, agreed. That's great advice. That's great advice. Thank you. You know, and as I post this to YouTube and like run it through YouTube, uh, and then I'll give everybody like a link to, to share. I'll see if I can like tag like minutes because you can do like Jody's talking about trauma resilience right here. Where you know Jana's talking about this at this time. Like you, there's like these little stopping points that I think I can tag. I want to try to do Perfect. that. Yeah, because not everybody's going to need all the information and doesn't need right. to sit through 90 minutes of it. Yeah. Right. That's good though. I'm excited. So Valerie and Alyssa, do you guys have any specific questions or is there anything that we didn't cover? Let me make sure. And then we can like let everybody go and have um, their Friday afternoon. No, I think you answered them. Thank you. Great. And great job, Valerie. You've been really like hammering it out this, this semester, doing a lot. I mean, it can't be easy being in high school and in college, but good for you. Yeah. I'm just trying to balance everything. It's not easy. It's not easy. Plus the tech is so, I know that you were a little bit nervous at the beginning, but you got it down. Good for you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Good. How was smart going, taking these classes in high school rather than waiting until you have a family and then it's even harder when you have more on your plate. How wonderful, how smart she is. You know, genius. All right, get it all done. She's on fire. Yeah, so exciting. Okay, anything else that we didn't? I just want to make sure we kind of covered everything. Um, I think we got everything. What do you think, Jody? You're on mute. Because I like spill my coffee all over myself. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, no, I'm good. Yeah. I'm okay, good. Okay, good. So I think this was pretty good. I mean, for the first time, this is kind of what I expected. So um, if there's anything else that comes up even after the, um, okay, I see like the chat. So anything that comes up after the meeting, just you guys can always email. I'll put my um, sure. email in the chat. Bye, Alyssa. Have a great weekend and I'll put it in here. Everybody has it. Let's see, Colin. Hi, guys. Have a great weekend. Bye, Bye, Janet. Thanks so much for popping in. I love your energy. <laughs> Thanks. Bye, guys. Valerie, look at yeah, so good. Okay, Valerie, great talking with you. Keep it up the hard work. We're almost done. Okay. Thank yep. you. Bye. 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 Got it. Okay. Uh, all right. Yeah. So maybe it only needs to be ninety minutes. Yeah. Hey, how about um, what do we have?